Hi, my name is Miss Andrea and I work for the Children's Museum Science Workshop Program and I am here um, with the generous support from the Harris County Department of Education, Case for Kids, City Connections, which is funded by the City of Houston. They are funding my uh, video today and so uh, what I'm bringing you today is a roly-poly habitat. How to make a roly-poly habitat. I showed you on an earlier video how to find roly-polies and why they're important. And now I'm going to show you how to make a habitat. If you want to take one, um, make one and take it into your house, you can do that. It's safe to do that. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it where they won't come out of there, out of their little terrarium. And um, I'm going to show you first the materials that you'll need. So first you need a container, an aquarium. Now, you can't go to the store and buy an aquarium right now. So what I've done is I've given you some alternatives. This is one that I really liked. I made my first one out of this. It's like a, a thing for tea. And I liked it because it kind of looks like a terrarium. But I didn't like the sides. I couldn't get the glue off the sides. And I wasn't able to see the roly polies as well. So I decided to change it. Instead, I used a water jug. It, the water jug is much it's longer. Um, it allows for being able to view a lot more. There's no stickiness on the side. You have a clear view. Uh, what I did was I cut a slit on three sides, like a little rectangle, but only on three sides. I took my box cutter, I made a little hole, and then I used my scissors to make um, a little flap. And then what I did, because the roly polies need to have air holes, I took, you can take your box cutter, watch where your fingers are all the time, and if you are going to use the box cutter, you need to have an adult with you. When we do this in the workshop, I know that you use the box cutters by yourself, science workshop students that are tool trained, uh, but we're there with you. And so if you're going to use the box cutter, I prefer that you have an adult with you. And if you're not a science workshop student, then you need to get adult help to do this part, because it's really easy to cut your fingers with this. You have to be really cognizant where the blade is and where your fingers are at all times. So you can take the box cutter and make some little slits so that you have some air holes. Or you could do what I did, which was I cut a little rectangle out. I just used my scissors and cut in. And then uh, this is just pantyhose. And then I put tape and I made a little flap so that if I want, I can come put tape around the side and they'll still be able to get air. So that's the actual uh, terrarium. And then what I did was, uh, you need soil. What I did was I got potting soil because it's very loose. It's better for the stuff to be loose. My soil here at the house is like gumbo. It's clay soil and it's very, very hard. So I took some of my soil and some potting soil and I mixed them together and filled about a third of the jug with the potting soil and, and clay mix. Now, you don't have potting soil at home, it's okay. You can use the dirt that you have outside. That's where the roly polies were before, so it's not like they can't deal with it. Um, so you can take the dirt from your house. Just make sure that you break it up and it's kind of loose. The next thing I did was I went and looked for the things that roly polies need to, in order to survive, what they need to eat. And that is leaves. I have a lot of leaves at my house because I compost them uh, to enrich my soil. Roly polies love leaves, and so I put a lot of leaves in there. I also pulled weeds last weekend, and I left my weeds out to dry in the sun, and now that they're nice and dry, I'm able to put them there. So roly polies will eat dead plants. Uh, if I put this in here, you'll see the roly polies come and they'll start to eat on the roots. Most of the time, they'll come and climb up there. The other thing I put in there were twigs and um, pieces of branches, like this one's pretty nice and rotty. They'll like that, and I put those in there. And then the last thing I put in there was, uh, you could put a nice flat stone, because they like to get underneath it, but if you don't, I have a piece of broken pottery, and if you'll see in mine, that's what I have in there. That way, if it starts to kind of get dry up in there, they, they like to get underneath that. And then pretty much you have it, put your soil in, Put your leaves in, put your twigs in, and then put your, um, your your dead weeds or plants and your stone. And now the roly polies themselves, you want to get more than one roly poly. Roly polies are communal, so there has to be more than one roly poly in there. At least three or four. If you can find three or four, you can put them in there and they'll be happy. 
And the other thing is you're not going to put water in there. And the reason is the roly polies actually absorb water through their gills. They don't drink. And if you put a lot of water, you'll end up drowning them. Because even though they're crustaceans, they're uh, terrestrial crustaceans. So they're not, they're cousins to lobsters and shrimp and crab, but they don't live in the water like they do. So that is pretty much all you need uh, for your roly poly habitat. These guys are super cool to watch. I can't help it. Every time I pass by, I've got to take a peek in and see what they're doing. Actually, I forgot, uh, even though they don't drink water, they do need to have a moist environment. So if you have a spray bottle at home, put some water in it, give them a little mist when you notice that it's getting dry in there. Again, don't put ton loads of water. And then if you don't have a spray bottle, then you can still add a little bit of water in there. Just add a little bit at a time. Don't put too much. So I think we should check out what the roly poly is doing. You'll probably find him on the leaves. Because that is his favorite thing to, to eat. So the roly polies, there's three of them in here. Um, you'll find them on different things all day long. You come in and check on them. The only other thing I would add is roly polies are nocturnal. So they, they like the dark. Don't put this in an area that's cold. Room temperature is fine and warm is fine, but cold is probably not good for them. They're, they're not as comfortable. And um, you can add some paper to the sides so that the, the, the ground is dark. And every once in a while you can pull it back and you might find them asleep right there on the side because they do that. And I've seen them do it before. Those of you that have been in the workshop and know, uh, have looked at the decomposer tank, the ones that we have in the decomposer tank at the workshop are sow bugs. So they don't roll up like the roly poly, but they look, they're just a little bit flatter and they're more gray. And um, there's a lot of them. They multiply very quickly, those sow bugs. <laughs> Maybe the roly polies will. I don't know if I have male and female in here. Um, but uh, they're really cool to watch. And this is a pretty easy project to do. And it's something that you could have for your sisters, brothers and sisters. So that's it for today.